Hello everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Red Raptor Writes. My name is Tim, and I'm here to bring you the 1,000 subscriber special. Thank you everyone so much for bringing me this far. Like, when I first started years ago, I never imagined having 1,000 subscribers or being able to do what I'm doing today. I hope I can keep making content that you guys enjoy. So let's get into this, our 1000 subscriber Q&A special. You see, I don't really talk about myself much on the channel, so here's your chance to kind of get to know the guy behind the videos. He's not that interesting of a guy, but still, <laughs> let's get through this. So on my community tab, I told you guys to just go crazy, ask me anything you want. And you certainly did, because I have some strange ones in here. Alright, so we're going to start off with... Bethany Cologne, who is my sister, and <laughs> she was in the VeggieTales special. So, nepotism for the win, I guess. <laughs> so, she asks the very important question, Five Guys or Popeye's Chicken Sandwich? And I've got to be honest here, I know there's so much hype around the Popeye's Sandwich, but I actually haven't tried it. I've tried the KFC one, which I really like. I've never been to Chick-fil-A, actually. And Burger King really disappointed me with their new hand-breaded chicken sandwich. I really loved their spicy chicken crisp that they had beforehand. But then they're like, nope, Tim can't be happy. And then they just got rid of it. So, um, I've had Five Guys and I, I love Five Guys. <laughs> so, since it's the only one I've tried, I have to say Five Guys. But um, that's very biased, obviously. I haven't tried Popeyes yet. But <laughs> if I do and I like it, I'll let you know. Okay, she also asks <laughs> a lot of fast food questions. McDonald's Sprite or Baja Blast? Listen, there's there's nothing that can even challenge McDonald's Sprite, alright? That just end of story. Sprite is the best, but then already when you add the McDonald's on top of it, then it's just it's too good. And cats or flies. I'm assuming she means the animal cats and not the musical, because it's not capitalized, so I'm just gonna have to say cats. Because although I'm a dog person and dogs are obviously the best, if you think otherwise, you're just crazy. Um, cats aren't that horrible. Well, I, most of some, a few of them aren't that horrible. But flies are just all horrible. Okay? <laughs> okay. Alright, next question comes from a name I can't pronounce, so I'm not going to butcher that. He has a monkey avatar, let's just leave it at that. So, he asks... What do you think is the most overrated dinosaurs documentary? And what do you think about Dinosaur Evolution? Okay, so most overrated... Uh, most overrated... It's hard to say, it depends on what you mean by overrated. Like, if it's overliked, then yeah. But if also if it's like overrated in terms of accuracy, then that's another story. I'm honestly going to get myself into a lot of trouble here, and I'm going to say <laughs> Walking with Dinosaurs, which sounds completely blasphemous, I know, but um, it maybe for the time it fared better. I mean, it's still great in terms of music, story, special effects, narration. Those are great, but as education, it still it kind of falls short these days. It's not um, as accurate as... A lot of other documentaries, even though it tries, which again, for the time, but uh, I know I'm getting myself into trouble here, so I'm just going to stop. I'm going to stop digging my grave. Okay. <laughs> and Dinosaur Revolution. Um, I really like Dinosaur Revolution. Um, that might also be controversial. It is very accurate. Maybe it's not perfect, but it does a lot right. And sometimes it's a bit too cartoony, and I think that's the main drawback, but I still really like it overall. Okay, so from Samuel Burdett. Sorry if I'm butchering these names. I'm, I'm a teacher, so I'm used to butchering names all the time. Those first days of meeting class are just ridiculous. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Planet Dinosaur? Which, okay, another dinosaur documentary. People give it a lot of crap for focusing on predator-prey relationships, but I think the dino behavior holds up pretty well by today's standards, even if the models don't. I also like Planet Dinosaur. I think there's like some competition between Planet Dinosaur and Dinosaur Revolution since they came out around the same time, but I think they're both good. Now, I do have to agree that it tends to indulge itself in violence a lot. Like, blood will splatter on the screen, there are a lot of scenes of fighting and hunting and killing and stuff. And even the logo, <laughs> it comes from blood splatters that like merge into the dinosaur word and the dinosaur picture. 
So it does indulge itself in violence a little too much, but if you're willing to look past that, um, it does a lot right, and I do like it. Alright, so I'm liking these questions so far. Let's keep going. Um, the Eureptodon gave a couple of questions, and, you know, he's a really cool guy. We talk a lot about dinosaurs and the Jurassic series, and I appreciate the conversations we have. So, he asks, what would you say to YouTubers that look up to you and are smaller? Cough, cough. <laughs> also, what are your current thoughts on the Jurassic fandom? What are your PC specs? What's your favorite dinosaur? Favorite Cenozoic animal? Favorite Paleozoic animal? On the butthole scale, 1 to 10, what would you rate yourself? What do you edit and record with? A lot of stuff. Okay, <laughs> so let's start one by one. Um, I don't really know a lot of channels that are smaller than mine. Yours is smaller than mine, and I do like your channel, and I hope to see you do great things in the future. Okay, thoughts on the Jurassic fandom. Uh, there's a lot of excitement right now, which is nice. We have Dominion, and a lot of people are liking the trailers and the sneak peeks that we got with Furious 9. And Jurassic World Evolution 2 is coming out, which I'm really excited about, because... I mean, the first one was okay, but I still played the heck out of it. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of hype, and I'm happy for the fandom. It's doing much better right now. Oh, and Camp Cretaceous. I haven't seen it personally, but still I know a lot of people like it. I plan to get there, I just need to finish Breaking Bad first. Hank for the win. Hank is my favorite. <laughs> okay. Um, what are your PC specs? I don't know. My cousin just built me a computer. He's awesome like that. <laughs> and I'm not as much of a technical whiz as he is. What's your favorite dinosaur? Um, it. I'm, I'm much of a theropod guy. I really like the, the meat eaters. I, I'm mostly carnivorous myself. Um, I like Acrocanthosaurus. Ceratosaurus, I think, has a really nice look to it. Super unique. Deinonychus has always been up there, and Albertosaurus. I like a slightly smaller, but like kind of sleeker Tyrannosaur. It's cool. All right. Favorite Cenozoic animal. All right, so this is like after the dinosaurs. Um, gosh, I like terror birds. <laughs> terror birds are really cool. So maybe like Titanus or Kalenkin or something. Paleozoic. Hold on. All right. I got this got this Dunkleosteus right here. Dunkleosteus, I think, is really cool. Has such a unique and kind of terrifying look. Maybe the focus isn't on it, but... Oh, man. It's a, it's a cool predator. Okay. On the butthole scale, 1 to 10, what would you rate yourself? Ooh, I'm a solid 6. <laughs> Gotta be honest, I'm a 6 on that scale. Because I'm nice to people, but, you know... I'm not afraid to roast the heck out of people for fun. <laughs> what do you edit and record with? I use a Blue Snowball microphone. Um, I edit <laughs> with Movavi Video Editor. It's nothing special, but it gets the job done. And I have Windows, so I can't use Final Cut Pro, which I grew up on and I loved it in film class, but gotta work with what I have, right? And thank you for being a, an epic friend. Alright, you're welcome. You're a cool friend too. Alright, so, now from Badger Gaming, what type of Dromaeosaurid is your Red Raptor? That's a good question, because, you know, they kind of look the same, <laughs> some of them. Um, mine is based off of Deinonychus. Uh, when I was first making this, um, well, re-editing the channel from Tim Rex to Red Raptor Rights, I took a picture of a Deinonychus skull, then I just outlined it and colored it in in red, and then used that as my logo. And I, I think it works. It's really cool. I like the red and black aesthetic that I have going on. Okay. Um, Francisco M. What's up, Francisco? Thanks for asking a question. Uh, favorite episode of The Clone Wars. Now, I've been thinking about this for a couple days, and it's been a while since I've seen the show in full, but the episodes that stick out to me, I really like the Domino Squad stuff with 99. <laughs> he was a true hero, man. Rip that guy. He was, he was one of us. And I really love the Krell arc. That was really intense. Um, basically, whenever the clones are the focus, the show is just S tier. The clones are the best. Okay. And from Obnoxious Wolfie, have you played any dinosaur survival games like Path of Titans, Beast of Bermuda, or The Isle? Just wondering. And congrats on the one sub, man. Thank you for that. Um, no. <laughs> no, I haven't. Um... Because I don't really have great internet speed. 
Um, I have a strong computer, but not the internet speed to back it up, so I can't really play like these massive online games. Um, also, it's more something I like to watch other YouTubers play. It's not necessarily my style. So, I do like to watch like Evo, Best in Slot when he plays it. Um, yeah, like the other dinosaur YouTubers. Okay, Bethany also asks, a Spider-Man 3 rewrite? What would you have done with the plot if you were the one writing it? Oh man, oh man, I dream about this every day. Like, if I had a time machine, I would just, I would go back and save Spider-Man 3. Now, the movie's not awful, it has a lot of redeeming qualities, but there are some edits I would like to make. First thing, and the most major thing, split it into two parts. There is too much going on in one movie to give everything the attention and detail it deserves. So that's why some things just feel rushed, like Harry getting amnesia, um, Eddie becomes super annoying <laughs> because like um, we don't get to spend too much time with him outside of him annoying people. Um, yes, um, I would also kind of cut Sandman because <laughs> he is one of the much better parts of Spider-Man 3, but I think considering all that's going on, he's the one loose end that can be cut. Um, so also, alright, so let's say, let's take two parts, part one and part two. Part one, okay, focus with Harry as the villain. He was built up in Spider-Man 2 and even the first one to be the villain. All right, give him his time to shine. Don't squeeze him in with the others. All right, but during part one, you can set up Eddie Brock, give Peter the symbiote, have black suit and Spider-Man, do all that, part one. And then part two, we can have Venom, and then Harry redeems himself. They team up, fight Venom. There it is, all right? Sam Raimi, I'm coming back in time for you. <laughs> okay, so while we're in the middle of rewrites, uh, Francisco also asks, since there will be a Bioshock sequel, what direction would you take to redeem the franchise? And I love how he says redeemed, because the first thing I'm doing, Bioshock Infinite and Burial at Sea, scrapped. They're gone. Okay? Done. Now, <laughs> that's the first major step, and you can just do that, and it's fine. But since Bioshock 3, no, I'm not calling it Bioshock 4, Infinite doesn't count, it seems to be an inevitability at this point. Alright, so here's what I would do. Burial at Sea kind of scrapped Bioshock 2, left it in the wastebasket. So, um, it has some references to Bioshock 2, very small ones, but it basically pretends that it doesn't exist. I'm gonna pull the Uno Reverse card, okay? Burial at Sea will not exist. We're gonna take it off from Minerva's Den. See, if you remember how that DLC ended, it's with Tenenbaum getting the Thinker, so that she can find a cure for the Atom Sickness, which is, you know, the Splicer's going insane and stuff. So, Bioshock 3 can pick it up where we left it. So, we have Tenenbaum, Porter, Jack, and maybe even Eleanor working together to cure Adam's sickness. One of them gets sent back to Rapture to save the leftover citizens. Um, I don't know. That's where it seems to be going. So that's where I'm going to take it. Definitely a much better place to end it than Burial at Sea. <laughs> okay. So... Torm28, don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, says, Do more prehistoric documentaries now. <laughs> I'm working on it. Uh, pl Dinosaur Planet is next. Not to be confused with Planet Dinosaur. So, I'm working on it. I'm watching it. Rewatching it. I'm rewatching it. I'm going to write a script soon. And then we're going to, into the editing process. Okay? Um, Bethany. Alright, lots of questions, Bethany. Thank you for that. <laughs> Asks, what's your favorite episode of Avatar The Last Airbender? I really like the drill. The drill is such an epic episode. Oh man, like the Avatar theme kicks in when he's running up the wall and then he comes back down and smashes the drill, destroys Azula. Oh my gosh, it's so epic. I love that. Amber Island Players is also up there. Um... I can't think of the, all of them off the top of my head right now, but, I mean, there's so much good Last Airbender that it doesn't really even matter what your favorite is because they're all so great, okay? Alright, so, the cool hyena asks, which one has to go? Allosaurus, T-Rex, Albertosaurus, Raptors, or Spinosaurus? Okay, <laughs> this is a fun question. Um... Alright, so I can take this in two ways. Basically, whichever one is my least favorite, or whichever one 
is the least crucial in its environment. So I at least protect the ecosystem in which it lives. But I'm just gonna say with my least favorite. Um, honestly, they're all they're all cool. I'm a theropod guy again. <laughs> Allosaurus maybe. Allosaurus is cool. I like Allosaurus, but it just isn't quite as epic as the other ones. Sorry, sorry, Allosaurus fans. You know, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Francisco, okay, thanks, Francisco, asks, what's a movie that makes you emotional? Hmm, I need to think about this one. <laughs> um, okay, so there's Up, for sure, those first ten minutes really hit you. Toy Story 2, um, Jesse's backstory, heartbreaking. Monsters, Inc., the ending, like, oh my gosh, when Sully has to say goodbye, that's also heartbreaking. Um... La La Land was pretty sad. That that was a gut puncher ending. I got very emotionally angry at In the Heights, if that counts for anything. So a lot of Pixar. Um, yes, a lot of Pixar. <laughs> All right, we're making some good progress. We're actually almost done already. Wow, <laughs> this has flown by so fast. So it's probably like an hour. All right. So, Peter Butter. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong again. <laughs> If you can bring any dinosaurs to the Jurassic Park and World franchise, what would they be? That's a great question. Ooh, that's also a tough question because it already has a lot of like really popular dinosaurs if you include the video games, uh, the shows. There's a lot there actually already. Hmm, I need to, I need to think long and hard about this. Two hours later. You know what, I think um, there is Inosaurus. I don't think I've seen that in a video game, or uh, definitely not a movie. So, there is Inosaurus. Just such an iconic dinosaur. An herbivore that can fight back, has just these wicked claws that are instantly recognizable. There is Inosaurus. Really cool. Plus, it has feathers, so since they're making a, something of a push for more feathers, that's a good candidate. Alright, Francisco's last question. Oh man, I'm gonna miss these. What is at least one redeemable quality of the Star Wars sequel trilogy. All right, so for those of you who have like a really good memory, I did like Awakens when it came out. I'm not just a hater who hates anything Disney. I did like some things. Um, a lot of it got ruined in the next two movies, Rise of Skywalker and Last Jedi, but I definitely liked some of the setup. I thought Finn had a lot of potential to be a great character, a defective stormtrooper, who becomes loyal to the resistance and I don't know, stands up to his former oppressors, maybe frees his fellow man. That that could have been great, but he just got thrown to the side as the guy who shouts Run! all the time. <laughs> so, yeah, poor Finn, I'm sorry. Kylo Ren also had potential. I, I do like the decisions The Last Jedi made. I just think they were executed poorly. Luke being like a depressed loser could have worked with better execution. Ray being a nobody was where they should have taken it, but then it gets walked back. Um, Kylo Ren killing Snoke and taking over the First Order. Again, all these ideas are good, but the way they were done was poorly. <laughs> Delta the Delta Dromius. Okay, good, <laughs> good job on that. What is an underrated dino doc you like but no one talks about? I think for me, it's Dinosaur Britain. Okay. Um, ooh, that's, a, that's another good one. I do like Dinosaur Planet that I'm reviewing right now. I don't think a lot of people have talked about it very much. Um, but it is, it is um, not perfect, but still good. Oh, we're getting to the end here, and that's kind of sad. I, I just want to keep going with these. But, uh, okay, so my friend Brian from Morning, Noon, and Night asked a couple questions that I'll like to get to. He says, what do you see as the future of your channel? As the future of my channel, I honestly don't know. Wherever the wind blows me. Right now it's dinosaurs. Um, maybe I'll stick with that if it keeps getting views. Whatever gets the views, basically. Because when I started this channel, I was just expecting to do film and video games. And that's mainly what I stuck with. But I noticed that the dinosaur videos are doing very, very well. That's where the demand was, so I needed to supply it. All right. Um, on whatever Gotham needs me to be. <laughs> no, no. Um, I definitely like what I'm doing right now, and 
you know, you never know where your audience wants you to go. Um, just stay adaptable. Um, don't get too focused on one thing. Don't die on that hill. And be willing to change your channel if the times call for it. Nothing, like, drastic or moral changing, I mean, but, you know, just um, whatever your niche is. Okay, so who are your favorite voice actors? And he asked that because he knows I'm going to say Kevin Michael Richardson, a man whose songs aren't sung loudly enough. He's um, just so good in everything he is. Um, if you don't know him, he's basically, basically if you've seen any show, he's the black voice in it. <laughs> okay, he'll be the repeating black voice. He has that like very smooth, cool voice, but it's like kind of tough too. Man, he, he's so cool. Um, he plays the uh, Joker in The Batman, the 2000 show. He's Jolie in KOTOR, and that is such an amazing role. Hearing him talk about the Force, oh, oh my gosh. It, it's, it's so good. Man, <laughs> this guy is a hero. Kevin Michael Richardson, great voice actor. Okay, okay. So he asks, why does the very thing that makes JP a good movie not make Jaws a bad movie? Okay, so they do have their differences in how they approach their respective creatures, like dinosaurs and sharks. But I think, I mean, that doesn't make one the good movie and one the bad movie. I just think that the way that they're utilized is good in both situations. And, I mean, on top of that, they already just focus on story and character and make you really care for these people. <laughs> like, my brother, whenever he watches Jaws, like, always begs for Quint to live because he's just so likable by the end of it. Like, you, you really care for these characters. And, but no matter how many times he sees it, Quint always dies in the end. So, I think they're both handled differently, but both end up being very good in the different directions that they go. Okay, so, I saved the best one for last. So, Spinozilla Sorvian asked me, would you like to debate about Jurassic Park slash World with me? Now, this is an interesting one. I pondered this one for quite a while, kind of thought back and forth, like, yeah, I, I'd do it, I wouldn't. But I did have to come to a consensus. So, for those of you who don't know, like, my first video as Red Raptor writes was, like, Jurassic World, how they didn't understand dinosaurs, which was about how... Um, the dinosaurs in the world movies shift more towards becoming the characters while the characters be while the actual human characters become like more bland and just dissolve into the background um he did a hit video on it <laughs> and like so i'm here chilling in the middle of the night you know watching my youtube and then like i just get a random facebook notification and he put his video on my facebook link to my video so, like, he clearly wanted me to see it, but then I saw it, and, you know, it was a pretty poorly made video, had a lot of shawman arguments, misrepresented my views, um, lots of false equivalencies, and he likes to say a lot of things that I already knew and addressed in my video, so, you know, a pretty poorly made hit video if you're gonna do one, but, you know, I, I try not to take offense, I mean, if I'm getting videos made about me, that means somehow I became big enough for people to notice me. So, you know, I don't really care. And I gave him, like, you know, the whatever, you know, good for you answer. Like, I didn't respond in anger or anything. That's, you know, he's free to do whatever he wants. I'm free to do whatever I want. So, but then to my comment, he commented, um, like, wait, you're not mad. So I get the feeling that he wanted me to be upset and to cause drama. But, I mean, really, I'm not. I don't really care. Maybe that's not the case, but over the internet, it's kind of hard to tell intent, you know, and tone. I didn't take the video seriously. Maybe if someone made, like, a really good, like, well-made video about some of my points and why they're wrong, then I would take it a bit more seriously and get offended. But, you know, a video with, like, you know, problems like that, you know, I, I didn't really care. Whatever. Um, but overall, he just seems like the kind of guy to try to get a rise out of you. But unfortunately for him, I'm not the kind of guy to fall for something like that. I mean, a Jurassic World Park debate sounds fun, but, you know, I don't really see it with this guy. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Whew, okay, that was a lot of questions, and I had a lot of fun doing that. It was really fun. <laughs> uh, thank you for everyone who gave me questions, and thanks to all my subscribers out there who pushed me over the 1,000 mark. I mean, it's just been such an honor. 
to get to make content for you guys that you enjoy. And I really appreciate all of you who watch my content and support me. So guys, remember if you enjoyed this video to please leave a like, subscribe, and check out my social media. See you next time.